Hello, everyone. In this video, I just want to start out by making some comments about this integration by parts formula. So in this formal box here, we have our formal definition or formal formula for this method. And recall that we derived this in the first video of this section. And so just some comments. So when you're computing an integration using by the, the by parts formula, you need your U and your DV to together must give everything inside your original integral. You want your original integral to just be able to be written exactly as the integral of U DV. Otherwise, this formula doesn't hold. And recall that DV part will contain the differential, meaning the DX from the original integral. Now, if possible, we want to choose our U and our DV so that the new integral that pops up, the integral of V DU, can be evaluated directly. So it's simpler. Otherwise, we try, try to choose a U and a DV so that the integral of V DU is simpler than the integral we started with. So when choosing your U and your DV, again, a lot of it comes down to experience. The more practice you see, the more practice you do, the more comfortable you'll be choosing with the correct U and DV right away. Um, for integration by parts, there's also a little rule that is often used. It's called ELATE. I'll just write that out, I-L-A-T-E, I-L-A-T-E, I don't know, I'll spell it out for us. This is an acronym, which means the following. And this is for choosing you, for choosing you in your UDV integral. So first thing you should look for, for Substituting in for U are inverse functions, inverse, in particular, inverse trig functions. So things like arc, cosine, arc, sine. So that should be, if you see an inverse trig function, that should be your first candidate for U. And then L are log functions. So that's anything like ln of x, which we saw we had a U in an earlier video, or log of x or log base whatever of x. And then A, any algebraic expression. So that's things like x cubed or x squared or three root x. And then T, any trig function would come next. So that's things like sine of x, cosine of x. And again, this is for choosing U. And then finally, if we have any exponential functions, So like e to the x or three to the x. So this is when you're, you have an integral and you suspect it should be solved by using the integration by parts method. And you wanna pick your u and your dv. First check, does your function or your integral contain an inverse trig? If so, then use that for you. If it doesn't, does it contain a log? If so, try that for you. If it doesn't, try an algebraic expression, et cetera. All right, so let's look at our final example in this section, example three. So we're looking at the integral from zero to one of arc sine of x. Okay, so right away, we don't have a formula for this integral. And so we can try to use integration by parts. So what we can do is follow this I latte or I late, I don't know, you can say however you want for choosing you. So we see that we have an inverse trig function. So let's go ahead and use that for you. So I'm going to let u equal arc sine of x. So then my dv is going to be dx. So then what is the derivative of arc sine? Well, if you recall some of your calc 1 days, we found that the arc derivative of arc sine is one over the square root of one minus x squared dx. And then v, the antiderivative of dx, would just be x, because the derivative of x is dx. So therefore, what did we find? Well, using integration by parts, we have that the integral from 0 to 1, and maybe I won't put bounds yet. I'm just going to leave it as the integral, and then we'll figure out bounds in a little bit. 
So the integral of arc sine of x dx is equal to u times v, so arc sine times x, arc sine of x times x minus the integral of v du, so x over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Okay, awesome. So one note about bounds. Um, so because in this formula, we don't change our x's around, so the integration bounds are going to remain the same, 0 to 1. Notice here, when we evaluate this, we're still going to evaluate this at 1 and 0 also, and then similar here when we find the antiderivative. All right, but just let's first just take a moment to reflect on this new integral that we found. So the integral of x over 1 minus x squared. So we can see that this integral doesn't become too helpful for us, but let's recall our new method that we learned last section of the method of substitution. So sometimes in integration by parts, we need to have two steps. One step to rewrite the integral and the second step to find the new integral that we get. So let's just take a side trip to think about that. So here's our little side trip. So we're looking at the integral of x over square root of one minus x squared dx. So it would be really helpful if this inside the radical symbol was like a u, right? If it didn't have a whole expression. So rather than using u, because I've already used u in this example up here, I'm going to use another variable, most common w. So I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to let w equal 1 minus x squared. So that would be dw is equal to negative 2x dx. So what I can do is divide by negative 2 to get my dw appearing in my integral. So using substitution, this becomes the integral of 1 half dw over the square root of w which is just one half the integral of one over the square root of w dw, which we saw becomes the following integral. And we saw this in the example in section five, three. It was similar to that example six in five, three. All right, so this then just becomes the integral or rather we'll take the antiderivative. So this is one over W to the one half, which is W to the negative one half. So we need an antiderivative. So we're gonna add one to the exponent and divide by that new exponent. So the antiderivative would become W to the positive one half over one half, which is the same thing as two times W to the one half. So this integral becomes one half two times root w. And we could say plus c if we're using the general. So the twos cancel out, fortunately for us, and we just get the square root of w. So letting w equal the version with x, this integral becomes, let me clean up a little bit here, this is substituting back in for x. This is why it's so good to get into that practice using substitution of substituting your, your u or your w uh, back in for what you let x be. This just becomes the integral of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so that's not too bad. Look at that little detour we took to find this integral. Came out pretty nicely. It's just this. All right, so... I'm going to just kind of box in this aside so we can stay a little bit organized. So that means our integral from 0 to 1 of arc sine of x dx becomes arc sine 
of x times x minus the integral of one minus x squared. And now we're evaluating this at zero and one. So rather than look at each term separately and evaluate at zero and one, I can just say, I'm gonna look at this whole expression and evaluate at zero and one, it's equivalent there. All right, not too bad, we're almost there, folks. So now plugging in one, we get arc sine of one times one minus the square root of one minus one squared minus, there's a lot of parentheses, minus arc sine of zero times zero minus the square root of one minus zero. Okay, we can clean this up. So this term, one minus one, just goes to zero, so that cancels. This term times zero goes to zero, so that cancels. So this just becomes, we have, we have enough room here, arc sine of one minus negative square root of one, so plus one. And now we just need to recall arc sine of one. So that means what angle gives us the sine of one? We see that's pi over two. So this just becomes pi over two plus one. Oh, nice job. All right, so just to kind of recap what we've done here, we've computed this definite integral of arc sine of x by first using integration by parts. I'm gonna use a color here, congratulatory color purple. So first using integration by parts then using a side of substitution and then evaluating to get our final number. Awesome, nice work on this everyone. Feel free to rewatch this video, take a break, work on those exercises and great job.